this thing on. I believe it is. What we got? Hopefully this thing irons itself out. One second. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's going on, man? How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully this goes the way I want it to. If not, I'll just do it in a regular session and edit the video up and upload it to youtube so give it a second here wait for a few more people to join in and we will get the party started everybody's having a great holiday mine has been awesome hope yours has been going as awesome as mine has seven in the box right now what's going on guys thank you guys for tuning in of course i am your neighborhood foodie barbecue semi-expert eddie wright and today i am tuning i am broadcasting live via the Barbecues Gurus of Mississippi group chat, group page, to talk about specs. So, I am a big fan of the GMG Gym Boy. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard the most recent news that Weber is getting ready to release the, um, the Smoke Fire series that they have been putting together. So, what I've done, got the art team here at Data Right Incorporated, put together a spec sheet. We're going to talk about the specs. We're going to talk about the good versus the bad. We're going to put them side by side. We're going to see which one on a spec sheet happens to be possibly the better of the devices. And we'll just we'll just say, you know, we'll just leave it to a vote. I think I got a poll up here that allows people to vote which one you want or which one you like. Um, yeah, we'll do it that way. <laughs> So I guess everybody could hear me now. I'm not sure why my comments aren't showing up. This thing sucks. Probably should have did this through a different portal. Okay, so let's talk uh, Weber Smokefire EX6, biggest one they got. Okay, so looking at my spec sheet here, what I have it says 1,008 square inches of total cooking space, but divided between two levels. 648 square inches on the lower rack, 360 square inches on the upper rack. So let's take that and compare it to the Jim Bowie. Jim Bowie has 600 and, uh oh, wait a minute. We don't have that one on. Oh, yeah, we do. 658 lower rack space. So already the Jim Bowie has 10 extra square inches of cooking space on the lower grate than the EX6. Not saying it's better. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying, as far as I'm concerned, that's a good check mark in my book. I'm a big guy on space. Uh, for those of us who aren't extremely professional, you know, and do a lot of mass production with cooking, we want to uh, maximize as much space as we can for these rigs that we buy. Um, this is one of the rigs that I bought after uh, having a great series of conversations with Jonathan and Tracy down at Grills, Mississippi. Um, we came to the conclusion that me being able to do what I do with vlogging food and talking about food and being able to get a good fire. Um, this would be the better bet for me. So I've become a very big fan of this product in the few months that I have had it, but doesn't mean it's the best product out there. I would love to have a higher gauge of steel. What's going on, Joe? How you doing tonight? I would love to have a higher gauge of steel, but I know for the money, that's not what that provides. But I also know that, hey, upgrades can always happen. So when the news came out about the Weber smoke fire, I had to at least look at it. So let, let, let's talk about the cooking space. So it says 1,008 square inches compared to just 685 on the uh, 658 on the um, Jim Boy Prime. It doesn't count the upper rack on the Jim Boy Prime because the Jim Boy Prime does not, the Jim Boy period doesn't come with a standard rack that you can just 
sit in. You have to purchase it, and it's not exactly as um, it's not a built-in system like a lot of these other uh, grills are. So, if you add the grill space that it does give you, when you do buy both racks, or you do buy two racks, you have the option to buy one or two. I have two. It almost doubles the cooking space and gives you the same, if not more, than the Weber kettle. This is just an estimate. I'm not a scientist. I'm just looking at the numbers, and I know what I look at when I put those racks in. I could fit four 12, 12 to 15-pound turkeys. I was able to fit four inside of the um, GMG Gym Boy. I think with the EX6, I would probably be able to get four as well. Okay, so we'll check size on the Gym Boy side. We'll just do that just for shits and giggles right now. Next, we're going to talk about temperature range. On the smoke fire ranges, 200 to 600 degrees. It's pretty standard. Uh, I think um, the Green Mountain Grill starts at 150. It ranges from 150 to about 600. So within that, they're both equally the same, a 50-degree difference. Some say it doesn't make much of a difference. But, hey, if I can dial something down to super low and slow at 150, hey, I'd be all for that. Pretty sure most people will be as well. But I don't think that's a hit against the Weber device that it doesn't go below 200 degrees. It's totally fine. Um, open flame direct grilling capability. Both have that. That's an equal. Um, plated steel cooking grates. I think that's kind of equal on both. I think the Weber kettle, I'm sorry, I think the Weber smoke fire will have a thicker gauge plated steel on the cooking grates. But um, a lot of us do a lot of modifications to our rigs. I know me, myself, I'm looking at purchasing a standard, I'm sorry, a uh, permanent upper rack that I can pull out with some shelving that will actually give me a slide-out space. Um, and I have the Gaki downdraft inside of the actual uh, device as well. And it does have a benefit for me. It doesn't consume as many pellets. It still shoes pellets, but it doesn't consume as many. Um, will there be a Gaki... Um, adjustment or device for the Weber smoke fire? Who knows? Uh, that's part of what this game is all about. People find things. People make new devices. Uh, it's just like cars. Manufacturer makes cars. You got all your aftermarket guys that go take the car apart and try and reproduce something that will make it either work faster, hard, quieter, and um, more efficiently. So maybe that will happen in the uh, in the future. 22 on the let's go talk about the hopper capacity pellets pellets are very important uh, especially for those who do those of us who do long cooks like briskets um i usually go through about a popper and a half doing a up to a 16 pound brisket so um yeah that's important to me so the weber smoke fire has a 22 pound hopper this category it wins on the gmg gym boy only has a 18 pound hopper capacity so four pounds check that box up for the weber smoke i'm sorry the weber smoke fire uh as being able to hold more pellets um and while talking about holding more pellets it also has a more it, it has a more up-to-date um auger to um to firing hole design and i think it's very unique um a lot of us who do have pellet grills sometimes have issues with misfires i've had some myself um so finding something that's gonna limit the issues or not saying totally get rid of them but that's gonna give me less misfires by chance i'm all for it so i do like that change uh, in that the, that Weber's put into that design process, the pellets actually roll downhill into the actual igniter box, which is pretty cool. Uh, so moving right along, um, porcelain coated steel construction on the um, Weber smoke fire doesn't state what gauge the steel is. Uh, that spec's important to me because, of course, we all know the thicker the gauge of steel, the more heat it will hold. Uh, so we're not really sure what gauge it is, but we do know on the uh, GMG, it's 12 gauge steel on a grease tray, 13 gauge steel on the lid, um, body's 14, and the lid, the SS lid, I'm not sure what SS means, but everything else is 14 gauge steel, which is a decent gauge to have. It's not terrible, it's not the best, but it's a pretty good gauge of steel for doing what we like to do with trying to maintain as much heat as we can. It's not Yoder, and it's not anything custom made. Of course, we know those are the high dollar uh, 
the high dollar big boy uh, rigs, but they are that for a reason. You get a very solid gauge of steel that's going to basically hold ev almost every ounce of heat and be more efficient. So moving right along, um, Weber Smokefire, full Wi-Fi Bluetooth capabilities with propri proprietary app. Um, I think that comes standard, which is cool. Uh, the Jim Bowie, unfortunately, does not. You have the option of the Jim Bowie Wi-Fi or just the Jim Bowie regular. So that's an upsell that the Jim Bowie has. And I think with every type of every type of pellet grill that's out there, they don't just give you the whole shebang. They give you options that you can use. I'm sorry, they give you options that you can purchase as to upgrade your rig to basically customize it as you want. So Kudos to them for doing that. I think that's pretty good. Both have LCD. Well, this has an LCD display. Um, the GMG Jimbo just has a number readout sometimes, which is kind of weird because when you get air codes, it's just like I'm not sure what this thing is doing. So that's a good. That's a that's a good difference in my opinion because you're able to um, you're able to with an LCD display read things clearly, and if it's giving you information as far as okay something's not right, it can actually give you a more structured readout than just say a air code that's moving in moving across the screen because it only has so much space within the uh, within the display box. So um, it has a five degree increment uh, PID control settings. Um, this, I think, is a better deal than the um, Jim Boy. I am not a huge fan of – what's going on, Terry? How you doing, man? I'm not a huge fan of the GMG temperature adjustment system. It feels a little flunky at times because it's really dark over there when you're not – when you don't have adequate lighting outside, which not everybody has. So when, you, when you're out on the patio or you're out somewhere, you have to really lean over and look down – in order to kind of look and then hit the button and do what you want to do. I really like what Weber's done with putting the, uh, the, the, the control settings up on the side of the actual rig and just giving it a turn dial that feels more tech, tech unique. And uh, it, it feels more homely to those of us who like a lot of technology or, or a little bit more technology in our cooking. Not everybody does, and I understand that. But, hey, just my opinion and my two cents. I'm a tech guy. I love those type of things. Moving along, uh, four meat temperature probes on the Weber smoke fire. One comes standard with the grill, others sold separately. Um, I think that's a good deal, but I am going to check the box for GMG on this one because they give you three uh, within your purchase, and you can use two at a time at any given time, and I think you have one extra. I think that's, I think that's great. For me, that's great. Um, but I would love to have more. Um, so GMG, please. Figure something out with the controller board. Get us more probes. Uh, those of us who have GMGs would appreciate it. Uh, mainly me. So uh, that's my thing on that one. Um, Hopper Dump, which both have. Um, this also features, the Weber also features a fire pot ash clean out. Not really sure how unique that is. I saw it has a slide out tray. I wasn't um, too wowed by it. It seemed kind of manual. Um, but then again, at the same time, the um, the Green Mountain Grill clean-out chute isn't all that as well. So I think the clean-out section of pellet grills overall can can use a lot more work and just and just figuring out something that's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, my shop vac doesn't always get it done from the chute. I have to eighty percent of the time take it all the way apart, uh, vacuum the crap out of it, which is fine, and uh, get it all cleaned up every maybe three or four cooks. I hate a lot of dust, so anytime I feel like I'm getting too much buildup and it's messing with my uh, my overall product, I try to go ahead and clean it out. So, with this, I think with the design of the uh, the pellet sh the pellet hopper and the uh, the way they have the igniter box, I think the pellets will either just fall down to a tray that's below the smoke fire, which I think is pretty cool, and you just pull the tray out and you dump it. Don't quote me on that. I have not seen this device. I am so anxiously awaiting for it to get two grills of Mississippi in January. So Tracy, Jonathan, if you guys are watching or listening, hey, when it gets here, give me a call. I want to see it. <laughs> uh, an overall total weight on the Weber Smoke Fire, 209 pounds. And on the GMG, it is a total of 185 pounds. So weight-wise, the Weber outweighs the GMG Jimboy, which I think is pretty cool. 
Um, weight is not always a defining factor of how efficient or how strong your metal may be. But in my opinion, I think the extra weight kind of does do great things for sturdiness. And uh, when moving these rigs around, you have less chance of something to buckle on you. It's not Yoder. It's not Yoder uh, or anything above that, anything custom uh, plated steel, whereas you, you could literally roll a Yoder in the traffic and it's going to hurt somebody. Um, these are basically mid-level devices, which I'm, I'm pretty, pretty fine with, and a lot of people are as well. Um, I've had issues with my wheels on my GMG, which I wish they would have done something a little bit different on the design side for the front wheels. The back wheels, not as much, but the front. But upgrades are coming. Um, I understand that no design house is perfect when they, any of you guys are creating these new devices. Uh, they want to be as efficient and as good as they can for the lowest amount of money in the manufacturing. So that's why we kind of get what we get uh, when purchasing some of them, and we have to upgrade them as such. So uh, overall, in conclusion to how I feel personally, I would love to see more. I like to get my hands on a Weber Smoke Fire, but I'm still rolling with the GMG Jim Bowie Prime. Um, I honestly feel like cooking surface area-wise, I don't think you'll be able to get four full turkeys on that Weber Smoke Fire, whereas I can get four spatchcock turkeys on my GMG Jim Bowie laid out, and it does fine so that's more or less what i'm i'm a big fan of a lot of cooking space um i worry about a lot of flame ups with the uh with the weber because there's no there's nothing really stopping of course they have the uh the seasonal grates which i guess is supposed to be something pretty spectacular <laughs> um i i don't own a weber i don't own a weber product so i'm not trying to talk down on it it's just something i've not experienced yet i know they are good too many people own them for them not to be good, and too many people speak very highly of them for them not to be great. So maybe one day I will add one to my collection, uh, but due to space and usability, I don't have one right now. Um, but with that being said, I think cooking space overall, I'm a big fan of the GMG product over that, but I think eventually I may end up changing my mind once I actually can physically see this device. Again, this is just a spec sheet I'm going off of. I laid them both out. I put a picture of them up in the group and um, let you guys see for yourself. It's not anything, you know, it's it's what I could find on the internet for the Weber smoke fire and what I find off the GM, GMG Jim Boy site, uh, the GMG site. So with that being said, man, Hey, leave your comments, put a vote in the box for which device you feel like is the better device. I can't wait for this device to come out. I'm very excited for it to get the grills of Mississippi so I can get my hands on it. For somebody to give us a demo would be even greater. Um, and that's kind of my spiel for tonight. I want to thank you guys for always tuning in. Here in Facebook, my first time actually doing a broadcast here. Thank you guys for tuning in. And, hey, we'll be back another time. We'll talk specs. We'll talk a lot of other things. And I'll go ahead and get this onto the channel for tomorrow. And um, thank you guys for being around for this type of stuff. And as always, gurus, keep smoking. Have a good night.